the Doppler effect. If you've come to understand it and understand the derivation of the equation, you've come to the right place. Right here, I'm just going to talk about sort of the intuition behind it and just present the equation, and then I'll go ahead and jump into a little bit more of the math and how it's derived in the next video. But perhaps you're familiar with the Doppler effect. Um, so, for example, when a uh, police officer is um, shooting their radar gun at you, they're trying to discover your speed, and they're using the Doppler effect. But um, an even bigger, um, perhaps more um, important discovery that was made based on the Doppler effect was this idea that our universe had a beginning, the Big Bang. And basically, the, the Doppler effect has shown us this redshift since um, other objects in the universe are expanding and they're going away from us. That redshift indicates to us that the universe had a beginning because everything is expanding. It had to, come, had to start at the middle. So Doppler effect, it gave us the Big Bang, which is kind of a big deal. And speaking of the Big Bang Theory, the, um, the TV show actually had a little um, talk about this. So let's go ahead and play that. Sheldon's supposed to be. Oh, he's the Doppler effect. Yes. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. <laughs> oh, sure, I see it. Now the Doppler effect. All right, I got a shower. You guys, um, make yourselves comfortable. Okay. See? People get it. <laughs> Hello. So what are you supposed to be? Me? I'll give you a hint. Meow. All right, so perhaps you get it. I mean, the Sheldon's explanation was wonderful. Um, but if you don't, we'll go ahead into a little bit of uh, intuition behind it. And we'll start off with going by what Sheldon, his, his sound effect, that vroom. All right, let's go ahead and um, see what that has to do with this. Here's a car coming at us and it's got its horn on. Okay, so what's that, what's that all about? What does that have to do with the Doppler effect? Well, let's take a look at this a little bit closer with a little um, cartoon underneath it. So let's say your car pulls up, and now your car is gonna go ahead and start honking its horn, so it's got this sound wave that's emitting from it, and that sound wave emits. And let's say that you're at this ear right here, um, and you're hearing, you're, now you're hearing that sound wave as that horn emits, and now that car is going to start coming closer to you. Let's see what happens with that wave. So as it's coming closer to you, it's compressing that wave, and so that at that at this point, you can see that 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 um, that wavelength of that of that sound wave is going to be compressed, which is going to correspond to a, a higher frequency. So you're going to hear a higher pitch um, as it's coming towards you. And as it goes away from you, that sound gets um, spread out more, that sound wave does, and you get a longer wavelength, corresponds to smaller frequency, which is a, a lower pitch, so you get that, that lower tune at the end. So that is, you know, that's the basic idea of, of how the, the Doppler effect works. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this in, in 2D as well, and then um, I'll show you the, the equation. So in 2D, we've got this um, electromagnetic wave emanating from the middle here, and if you can see that, it's sort of it just emanating evenly in, in all directions as, um, as you kind of expect, and there's no difference depending on, on where you are because it's, it's not moving at all. But let's go ahead and compare that if that source of the electromagnetic wave is actually moving. So here on the right, it's actually moving, and you can see that we got a little bit of compression going on. So let's go ahead and just draw this out just for some basic intuition here. So you could imagine that if this is my... Um, Let's say this is like my standard wavelength down here, and we'll say that, that there's a distance between those that's lambda naught. That's just kind of what we'd expect. And over here, we've got kind of a new lambda because you can see it's really tight. So we've got this really close lambda here, and here um, we could say that lambda, it's going to be less than our lambda naught, right, because it's smaller. And if we looked over on this side, you could see that, 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 that this wavelength's bigger over here. So we've got... Um, on this side, lambda is going to be greater than lambda naught, right? And then um, if we looked up here, actually, um, you could see that that's actually going to be the same. These wave this wavelength here is going to be the same as the wavelength over here. So that's actually going to be um, lambda is going to actually equal lambda naught. 
So that kind of helps to look at this from this um, 2D perspective, because you can see, depending on what that, that angle is here, you're going to get um, a different effect from the, the Doppler shift. And so let me just go ahead and throw this equation up there and kind of ruin the, the whole surprise for you. So our new frequency, f, is going to equal f0, which is our initial frequency, times 1 plus v cosine theta, 2v cosine theta over c. Um, I got the 2 in here in this case, because we're if, we're if we're thinking of, of, uh, of radar. And that theta is going to correspond to these, this different angle that, um, that the object's moving. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll talk more about that in the next video. But um, let's go ahead and just, just solve this for v, right? Because if that policeman's shooting his radar gun at you, he wants to figure out your velocity. So you can pretty easily solve, solve this for v. So that's going to turn out to be c times f minus f naught over 2 f naught cosine. And that is the basic intuition behind the Doppler effect. Um, so I hope it makes sense and hope you are inspired to dress up as the Doppler effect next Halloween. Um, stick around if you want to see the derivation of how we actually get this.